Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. If you're into these older Toyotas like I am, or any classic vehicle, you know that cracked dash pads are just a way of life. Crack-free dashes are getting extremely hard to find for these trucks, and they usually cost an arm and a leg if you happen to find one on eBay. Here's a dash from a 1987 Toyota pickup. It's one of the worst ones I have here, and it has plenty of large, deep cracks. I've got nothing to lose here, so I decided it was the perfect candidate for a restoration. Now this is the first time I've attempted restoring one of these old dash pads, and mistakes were made. But as always, I leave my bloopers in the video so you can learn from my mistakes and see how I fix them. If all this seems like a lot of work, I'll show another alternative later in the video that takes a lot less time for just a little bit more money. Here's everything I should need to restore this old cracked dash. Here's some marine grade vinyl, I got this from Joanne Fabrics, $10 for a half yard. An X-Acto knife to cut the vinyl. A heat gun, which I'll use to help soften the vinyl around some of the curved areas. A Dremel, which I'll use to grind down these cracks to a V-shape. Some Bondo, and this is the stuff with the fiberglass strands in it. I think that's gonna hold up better than the cheap pink stuff. Some 80 grit sandpaper to scuff up the whole surface. And that should help the adhesive stick better. For that, I have Sprayway Fast Tac 92, recommended by one of my viewers. Thanks, Lee. His channel is all for wheels. And of course, some prep spray to clean the surface and remove any grease or oils. And some clamps that I may need to help hold the vinyl to the dash while the glue dries. I'll put links to all these things in the description. It's Dremel time. Oh, and don't forget a mask because it's about to get real dusty in here. The Bondo is thick, so it's going to lay down better in a deep groove instead of these small cracks I have right now. This one has crowned at the top, so I need to trim it back anyways. The others are too a little bit. I'm just grinding down both sides of the crack, and the goal is to make more of a gradual V or U shape. There's a start, and through the vinyl, but the crack goes pretty deep into the foam, so I've got a long way to go. See what I mean about the dust? That's about as far as I want to go on the cracks. That's a nice groove for the filler. You're going to need a chop back as well. That's better. Now I'm taking a close look at all the grooves I just cut to make sure that there's no crowning where they poke up in the middle. Next, I need to sand these with some 80 grit sandpaper and that's to help give the filler something to bite to for a better bond because it's not going to bond well to a smooth non-porous surface. So I got to scuff it up. I'm sanding along the edges of the groove and also around the outside of the groove as well, giving myself plenty of extra scuffed surface to spread the filler. Even after sanding this big groove down, it looks okay to the naked eye, but if I put a straight edge on it, I could tell it's still crowned at the center. So I need to take it down farther right here. I'm using a block behind the sandpaper to create a flat surface. And that helps to knock down any high points. That's better, nice and flat. There's another area where I need to remove some material. These vents are a perfect fit into the factory dash once they snap in. Such a satisfying sound. There's no gap around the outer edge. The problem now is the vinyl is maybe close to a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I have to remove additional material around the vent openings to allow for one sixteenth of an inch on each side of the vent. Quick tip for removing these safely. Once they're clicked and locked in, push down on these metal tabs from the back side and that releases the vent. There's a little raised area on the metal tab. 
and that clicks in and holds to the metal frame around the vent opening. I have a whole video on removing these vents and dash pad from these trucks. There's a couple hidden bolts. I'll put a link to that one in the description. The corners seem to be the tightest fit, so I'll remove material from there first. Or I guess you could round off the corners and the vents, but I don't want to do that. Quick test here. I cut out a vent opening on a piece of the vinyl, and I'm getting it warm with the heat gun. That softens it up and helps it form and shape easier. And now I'm going to see how all this fits together. Tight. Tighter than a... <laughs> Better leave that part out. That sound makes me nervous. These old plastic vents are fragile. It's not even clicking into place. Time to remove some material. I've got this bullet shaped attachment. Seems good for trimming the sides. All right, I went all the way around the inside edge there. It's hard to do it evenly. The second it goes through the vinyl, it eats through the foam like nothing. Shouldn't be too noticeable under the vinyl though. Time for another test fit. Oh yeah, going in much easier. A little trimming made a huge difference. Quick wipe down with prep spray and a paper towel to remove the dust. When it comes to filling dash cracks, there's a couple of options. Some people say to use fiberglass resin. However, the resin dries pretty hard. So I did a quick test. Resin and filler. I'm a little worried about the resin cracking over time as the dash expands and contracts when it's exposed to extreme heat and cold. You can see the body filler has a little bit of flex to it. The resin on the other hand flexes very little before it cracks. I think this long strand body filler is the way to go. The last thing I want is new cracks forming and showing beneath the vinyl. So let's mix some Bondo. Body filler. Same thing. Bondo is uh, 3M's brand of body filler, but people seem to call any body filler Bondo. <sighs> I goofed. This isn't the long strand filler. I had the wrong can in the video the whole time. This is what I wanted. Long strand. It looks like they put a bunch of cat hair in it. Those fiberglass strands make it a lot stronger than regular filler. So it's good for thicker, more structural applications where regular filler might crack over time. Now add some hardener, a little watery. I have no idea how old this is. And spread it. Mix it all up real well. Don't want to see any more of that red hardener. Now, I really want to squish it all the way down into that groove. Not too worried about how messy it gets right now. Just want to get down in there as much as I can. See now why I sanded so far out from the grooves? With all the deep cracks on this side, I took out a lot of dash material with the Dremel. So I'm trying to reform the shape of this side. Just the general shape for right now. I'll get to the details later on. All right, let this dry. So here it is, not pretty, far from done. This takes a lot of steps to complete. Next, I did a quick scanning with the 80 grit sandpaper on a sponge block to knock down all the high points. All the light blue areas were knocked down by the sandpaper. And all the dark blue areas are the recessed areas that didn't get sanded. So those are my low spots. I need to add more filler in these areas. When I'm sanding these flat surfaces, I'm wrapping the 80 grit paper around a foam block. Otherwise, just using my fingers can make the surface uneven. Now, I'm going to use the sandpaper on my finger to get in the grooves. I'm scuffing the recessed areas with the 80 grit to help give the next round of filler a rougher surface to bite to. 
Giving it a good spray down with the prep spray to remove any sanding dust. Now I'm ready to use this filler on top of the long strand bondo. You can see this is a smooth texture compared to the long strand. So it'll fill in the smaller areas better and I'll be able to shape it easier. Yeah. This is a lot easier to apply than the other stuff with the fiberglass in it. I can spread it smooth like this. Like I said before, this process goes general to specific. So I'm concerned with the big areas first and worry about the fine details last. I'm putting pressure with the spreader to really push the filler down into all the crevices. This part is going to be tricky because the crack went right along this curved edge. I'll use my finger to get that curve back. All right, round two is done. It's getting there. It's cured. Still far from done, but starting to take shape. Time to sand. All right, it's all cleaned up. Time for round three. I need a smaller spreader for the fine details. So I just cut this one in half. Mix this up. Once again, filling in the low areas. Except the low areas are getting smaller each time. The smaller spreader makes these smaller areas a lot easier to work with. These small areas are looking really good. A little extra is fine. I can always sand it down. It would be nice if this was the last round of body filler, but I'm not a professional, so I'm sure it'll have another round or so, especially on this curved recessed area. I'm a little on the OCD side when it comes to this stuff. I drywalled and mudded a ceiling once that wasn't gonna be textured. Just about drove myself crazy getting it perfectly smooth. Turned out nice though. I started a second channel for miscellaneous home improvement projects. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. But if you've ever done drywalling, then bodywork will be kind of familiar. Except you're matching contours instead of making it perfectly flat. I need my finger for this curve again. Wear a rubber glove, by the way. I should have picked some up. This curve is killing me. And then there's a tiny shoulder going all the way around the edge of this recessed area. I'm just going to go ahead and make that smooth. That way, I don't have to worry about replicating it. And a smooth rolled transition will be better for the vinyl to lay down on. One less contour to worry about. There we go. Getting closer. I told you, I'm OCD when it comes to this stuff. We'll let this dry and come back for round four. We're back. The filler is cured. Let's sand down the high points and see where we're at. Looking pretty good. Filling in this shoulder was the way to go. Oh look, low spot right here a couple tiny ones here i feel this one don't know if you can see that but my fingers can feel imperfections that the eye can't see so feel across there's another one quick test before i go crazy getting this perfectly smooth got some vinyl and i'm curious if these tiny low spots will even show through. Nope, can't even tell. That one's kind of visible. So the thickness of the vinyl will hide the minor imperfections. And that saves a lot of time. Notice those arrows and circles I made with the marker. When the imperfections are this small, it's easy to miss them. 
marking them all might save me on another round of filler. All right, it's all dry. This could have been my last round of filler. It's looking pretty good. Time to sand. All right, feel smooth. Uh-oh, right here. I can't see it through the camera. There's an ever so slight low spot. That'll do. Next, I cleaned the whole dash with prep spray to remove any dust and contaminants. Now it's time for vinyl. I've got some cardboard down, half mask, heat gun, and the vinyl, and the Fast Tac 92 by Sprayway. I'll have links to all these products in the description. This is an aerosol contact cement, and it needs to sit for at least five minutes after being applied before I put the vinyl on the dash. We'll see how it does. First, I outline the dash onto the back of the vinyl so I don't spray more area than needed. Next, I put down some paper and sprayed the entire dash and let everything sit for five minutes. Then I set the dash on the vinyl and mistake number one happened. I didn't see the front of the dash as I was wrapping the vinyl on it and there was a long bubble where I didn't pull it tight first. And the Fast Hack 92 is not really repositionable. It took a lot of work to pull that vinyl back off, but I got it pressed on again, nice and smooth. Here's my second goof. I wrestled with this end on the passenger side of the dash for a while, and I just couldn't get it to lay down how I wanted. It kept wrinkling, and I didn't like the way it looked. Then this happened. No matter how much heat I used, the vinyl wouldn't stretch and stay stuck to the edges of the recessed area on top of the dash. The recessed screw holes worked out nice with a little heat in my finger. And so did the vent openings. Well, this could have gone better. The biggest problem is that I cannot get the vinyl to stick to the recessed area. I've used the heat gun to the point I couldn't touch the vinyl. And you can see there's just not enough give, enough stretch from the vinyl. The vents are tight in the corners, but they look good. Here's ugly number two. I've got these wrinkles or like stretch marks from reapplying this part so many times trying to get it right. I had to end up cutting it right here and folding this under. So there's a seam showing. I'm not crazy about it. It turns out there's just not enough stretch. This marine grade vinyl is just too thick. I trimmed all the excess to see how it looked all done. It has a slight texture here from where I had to pull the glue apart and reposition the vinyl. But you might not notice it if I didn't point it out. You can really see it on the edge here there and there but that's the least of my problems the top turned out great this corner i'm not happy about the side could be better and then there's this ugly seam i don't like it but there was no way around it the screw holes shrink back a little bit once they cooled off but that's not going to be too visible vent openings eh, a minus on those now for the worst part Worst for last. It's just not happening. The vinyl is too thick to stretch into the contour of the dash here. That's right on top where I'd see it every time I drive. I could live with the other imperfections, but this ruins it all for me. Before I ripped the vinyl off and started it over, I did a test and got the vinyl as hot as I could. I clamped this pipe into the curved recessed area of the dash. I'm going to leave it here clamp for a while and uh, see what happens. Let's see if that'll make things stick together. Just pulled off the clamps and it worked, but it pulled the vinyl away from the other side of the recessed area. There's just not enough give with this vinyl. I even tried poking a hole in case it was trapped air that was keeping this from laying down and that didn't make a difference. I'm going to try again with some thinner vinyl. Just got back from Hobby Lobby and their vinyl was a little bit thinner. This stuff has a little more stretch to it. Unfortunately, they didn't have the same dark gray, so I'll have to paint or dye this to match.
So I thought about cutting a piece of wood to match the recessed area, but I can't match that curve with a cut piece of wood. I need to get the rest of that glue off, but check this out. Throw a piece of plastic down. Saran wrap kind of forms to the edges real nice. Press it all down in there, real smooth like. There we go. And I've got some old body filler, stuff I wouldn't use on a car. This is at least 10 or 15 years old. And there's like two inches left in the bottom of this can. Yeah, real old, but perfect for making a mold. Like icing on a cake. Like I said in the uh, transmission solenoid repair video, I might have a backup career in cake decorating. It's been about 10 minutes. The filler is curing and it's getting really warm. Slight problem. It's shrinking or warping. Put a little bit of weight on there to keep that down. All right, my cake is done. Uh-oh. Kinda stuck there. Oh no. I kind of assumed this would pop right out. Maybe I can get in there. I don't want to damage the dash though. Oh yeah, that little gap. There we go. All right, this is better. Now I'm not pressing against the vinyl. Wow, it's so stuck. I guess the ram wrap was not the right choice. At this point, I don't care if the mold breaks. I'm more concerned with saving the dash. So yeah, it's just the glue stuck to the saran wrap. Well, there you go. Learn something new today. What not to do. Getting this old glue off now. This seems to work well. Well, that took forever. I actually got a blister on my thumb from all the rubbing. There's the big old glue booger. So all that was to make this. The bottom has a funky texture from the saran wrap, I guess. I need to clean up some of these edges. But there it is. Sanding down the edges of my Bondo bar. I'm feeling better about this now. All right, I've got my paper down to catch any overspray. I'm gonna try to be more prepared this time and use my Bondo bar, the mold, along with some heat and pre-stretch the vinyl around the recessed area. So I won't have to worry about it as much when I'm trying to get the rest of the dash covered. Okay, so the heat didn't go well. This vinyl does not take heat like that thicker marine grade stuff. It started to melt it. So I need to be really careful with this thinner vinyl. Probably doesn't help I have a old school industrial heat gun. I had enough material where I was able to turn it around and not use that burn spot. Very carefully this time. I'm going to preheat the recessed area for farther away and I'm gonna keep moving the gun. It's starting to sag down a little bit Nice and soft. All right, hope this does the trick. Having a little trouble smoothing out the corners. Not as easy as I hoped. This requires two hands. Just needs a little bit of stretching. It's had a few minutes to cool down and you can see I have sort of a pre-molded recessed area in the vinyl. And that fits in the dash just right. Still pretty warm under the mold. I'm gonna leave this on and let it cool down. Next, I clamped the mold in place and outlined the top of the dash on the back of the vinyl. Last time I sprayed everything at once and that caused some problems. I'm only spraying the top first this time. And then this outline area on the vinyl so I can focus on this recessed area first. Then I'll worry about the face of the dashboard next. 
and I'll wrap around the bottom edge last. I'm still not sure how this edge is going to work, if there's going to be enough stretch or if I'll have to cut it and have a seam. Time to spray the top of the dash. Got a little bit of dry glue on here from last time. Try and get in here real good. Looks good. Could use a little more right there. Now I'm just doing the top panel. The spray pattern is almost too narrow for this. This kind of works. Get the recessed area good. This has had five minutes to get tacky and my mold is going under the recessed area here. And now make sure I get this lined up right. Well, that didn't exactly work well. It's pretty tight over the recessed area. <sighs> here we go again. I need to reposition the vinyl. Put a little fresh glue down. Either I should just stick to body and paintwork, or this is just harder than it looks. Again, it's coming up on the curve here. Got a wrinkle here. Easy fix. Just pull it up and stretch it back down. Let's see how much I can stretch this with a little heat. Not gonna melt the vinyl this time. All right, that softened it up. Now it's time for Blue Bondo Bar. That helped, but it's still coming back up as it cools. Clamp you. Clamp you. Need a big one here. Do another one here. There we go. It's been about uh, 10 minutes. I can keep going on the rest of the dash while that cures. Let this sit for five minutes. Just making sure I press from the top side toward the work area so I don't trap any air bubbles or wrinkles. There's no rush here. I have plenty of time before the fast tack dries. That might have been one problem on the first try. I felt like I needed a rush before the glue dried and I sprayed the whole thing at once. Tried to get it all on one try. You saw how that worked out. I was peeling off like 30 seconds later. I'm doing all the large main areas first. Now the wrap around the passenger side. I'm really pulling on this vinyl, trying to stretch it into place, but it's just not elastic enough. I've got the same wrinkles as last time. They're not as bad, mostly just on the back edge, so they'll be less obvious, but I'm still going to have to cut the bottom edge and have a seam. Trim some of this extra vinyl off here first so I can see what I'm doing. I'm leaving a little extra on the edges for now. I'll go back for a final trim later. It was pretty close to being able to stretch with no cutting. That was the goal. Maybe if the vinyl was a little thinner. Because I was trying to do it with no cutting seam, I kind of have excess overlap now. That might be visible when it's all done. I'll do what I can here. Try and get it close with the scissors. Nice and straight. So there's what I'll end up with. I guess I can live with that. Better than a ugly cracked dash. While this sits for five minutes, I'll get some heat on these uh, screw holes. Here we go. My brother's toothbrush. Shout out to Speedcar99. Love his videos. Now I can get in there and really press the vinyl to the recessed holes. There you can see the before and after. I'm surprised this is this easy. And done. Ooh, getting hot. This thinner vinyl, definitely easier to work with than the marine grade stuff. Now just press this edge down and that's just how it's going to be.
and get this last screw hole. Next step is cutting out the vent openings. Just like with the screw holes, I softened the vinyl with heat and stretched it into the opening. Now I'm just cutting an X across the opening, but not quite all the way to the corners. That newspaper is behind the dash from uh, when I was spraying glue to block overspray and keep the inside from getting all sticky. Now I have some slack to press the side edges down. Need a little more cut here to get this down. Here's a close up of how it's looking so far. So I let everything sit for a day and now the glue has dried completely. Let's see how the custom Bondo mold worked out. Uh oh. Not again. Good. Well, this side's good. This one has some bubbles. But if you look real close, the texture on the bottom of the mold is now pressed into the vinyl. That's the saran wrap texture. Yeah, see? And if you look where some of those big ones are, you can see the high points from them on the vinyl. Like this guy is from this right here. I guess I should have filled and sanded the bottom of the mold too or put a piece of extra vinyl between them. I'm still a little disappointed it didn't get all the bubbles out from the edge. But hey, when you're looking at the dash from the seats, that part isn't gonna be visible. So I'll deal with it. Again, not proud of the wrinkles here, but they're a little better than the first time. And of course, the seam here. There was just no way around that using this material. But look at that, no cracks on the dash. That makes these other imperfections all worth it in my opinion. I've got some black marks from the newspaper. I need to clean that off. So maybe don't use newspaper next time. Well, there she is. Time to trim the fat. Now, with the darker marine vinyl I used before, this will be all done. And I'll be ready to install these vents. But I have an extra step because this is a lighter gray. I need to dye it to match. Here's some Duplicolor vinyl and fabric paint, which I've had good results with before. But this is my last can and it's flat black. So I'm going to wait to paint this until I know for sure what truck it's going into. That way I can paint it to match. Charcoal, brown or blue, or maybe maroon. Never had a maroon interior in my Toyotas. They must be rare. So I'll pop these in for this video. But normally, I'd paint or dye the vinyl first if needed. This vent wasn't clicking in. I need to trim a little more off here, right up against that metal edge. If there's vinyl over that metal edge, the clip won't be able to click in behind it, and the vent will pop right out. So there you go. If you've made it this far, you've seen how much time and labor is involved. Way more than I expected. Now I understand why a mint condition, crack-free dash sells for so much on eBay. I already had all the tools I used, but if you were buying everything I used today, you might be in for 50 or 75 bucks. I only had to buy the vinyl, which was $10 from Joann Fabrics. And then the thinner stuff was only $3 from Hobby Lobby. And that's for a half yard, which is plenty to do a Toyota dash. So I didn't have much to lose besides a whole lot of time. There is another option though, if you don't have a lot of time. And after doing all this work, I can honestly say it's worth every penny. There are companies that make plastic dash caps that fit right over your existing dash. They come in black, but you can paint them to match with the vinyl and fabric paint I showed earlier in the video. I wasn't a believer until I saw a picture of one painted gray, and now I'm definitely going to go that route next time. They glue right over the factory dash and all you have to do is knock down the high points first with the Dremel or sanding and then clean it and you're ready to glue your cap right over it. No body filler, no shaping, no vinyl stretching. And these caps are only about 140 bucks. I used to think that was kind of pricey for a piece of plastic, but after this experience, I think it's worth every penny. No, this video is not sponsored by anybody who makes 
or sells these caps. I'm just trying to make your life easier before you decide how you want to repair your crack dash. The 84 to 88 Toyota dash I repaired was an extra challenge thanks to all the right angles and this recessed area on the top. A third generation Toyota dash is a lot more smooth and rounded so it's going to be a lot easier to wrap in vinyl. I'm definitely going to revisit this project again with my 80 series Land Cruisers dash because it's also rounded but it's also right hand drive and there's no company out there that makes a dash cap for a right hand drive 80 series Land Cruiser. But hopefully this video helps someone out, uh, showed you what not to do in a lot of parts. Do me a favor and give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful and consider subscribing for more Toyota content and how-to videos here at the 6th Gear Garage.